I'm Corbett Wall with DV Auction here with your feeder flash for Monday, October the 16th, brought to you in part by Macrosin by Bimeda. Macrosin is a bold, straight shooting to lathromycin injection that does what it's supposed to do for you, for your cattle, and for your bottom line. For more information, go to macrosin.com. Also, Joplin Regional Stockyards only expecting around 4,000 head. A uh, fairly light run for them here, this regular feeder cattle on Monday. Uh, they are going to have quite a few loads of, of true yearlings on there, guys. If you're looking for some true yearlings, I know our runs are pretty much dominated by calves right now, but uh, they've got some true yearlings going to be in the mix here on Monday. Uh, don't forget on Wednesday, they got a big special cow sale. They'll have over a thousand head there all together. That's Wednesday, October the 18th, this Wednesday at 4.30 in the afternoon after their way up cow sale. Uh, but they'll have lots of pears, bred cows, and breeding age bulls. If you want to see a list of the consignments for the big cow sale coming up this Wednesday, go to JoplinStockyards.com. Formula cattle are tighter too. And I think sometimes we get to thinking that when we talk about tight supplies that it's only the cattle that are available for negotiated cash that are tight and, uh, and, and you know, we, we gauge so much how much of those trade every week uh, and every day whenever they are trading uh, that we forget about the formula cattle. The formula cattle, the ones that are in the, the AMAs, the Alternative Marketing Agreements, uh, mostly owned by your big corporate feeders, uh, those that are in bed with the with the pa their packer partners, and you think, well, they they have the same amount all the time. No, the formula cattle are tighter too. We've been talking about tight supplies of market ready cattle, and we've been talking all summer about how when we got into the fourth quarter, they were going to get extremely tight in the first part of next year also. Uh, we're in the fourth quarter now, guys, and our numbers are extremely tight. Now, we saw your Packers come out aggressively bidding on the negotiated cash cattle that were up for sale. And uh, they're doing that in part trying to make up for the tighter numbers of formula cattle that are, that are not out there. Uh, you know, we, we typically see un, under normal supply times, we typically see each week, uh, that we move or sell about 280,000 uh, formula cattle. Well, for the past several weeks, it's more, been more like 240 or 250. That's significant. Uh, our harvest has been extremely light here for the last few months. Uh, the, this, this last week, it was only 617,000. That, that is extremely tight, especially when it's 45,000 less than the same week a year ago. And we've been seeing that week after week after week, 40 to uh, 45,000 less cattle being harvested. Well, that, that's uh, less product that they have to sell. And I told you here several weeks ago that at some point we were gonna hit a breaking point to where they're not being able to get their needs filled. Uh, your packers for the product that they have uh, promised to their customers. And I think we're getting there. I mean, we've never seen uh, Packers get this aggressive of late. They, they started buying cattle in the Southern Plains a dollar higher than the previous week. They sold about 10,000 head in Kansas and about 10,000 head in Texas on Wednesday. You think, gosh, that was a good move and everything. No, no, no. Thursday morning, they were back into Kansas and Texas wanting to give another dollar more and try to buy more cattle. We don't see that. We haven't seen that in a long time. I mean, since uh, uh, we've, we've pretty much lost most of our negotiated trade, but you know, it, it does a body good to hear that trade coming out. And then the Northern Plains started selling their cattle on Thursday and they were able to advance their bids too. So we saw higher prices, nice gains, and another big movement. And all this activity and this aggressiveness shown by your Packers was on a week following one of the biggest negotiated trades uh, that we've seen for a long time in your five area feeding region. It was almost 80,000 head traded negotiated cash week before last. 
And then this past week, going to have another big week at higher prices. And if, if things keep on like this uh, and they don't get uh, captive supplies, you know, uh, um, set up for a head, now don't think they weren't trying to do that this week. They were wanting to buy cattle uh, for November and on into November. You've got to resist it, guys. The few of you guys that still sell negotiated cash, please try to resist that. Sell them, keep them hand to mouth. Keep them aggressive for your uh, cash cattle that you have on your show list every week. But uh, you know it was a it was a pretty impressive week that we saw. Uh, we saw our weather change. You know we're fully into fall now, fall weather. Uh, many areas up in the northern plains and the upper Midwest saw their first. Uh, freezes of the season. Uh, we it finally stopped being hot uh, down in the southern plains, getting down into the 40s and high 30s in places in the southern plains. Not getting into the 90s as often, uh, stopping about the 80s or even in the high 60s in some places down in the southern plains. And I think uh, I know I was. I thought this summer was never going to end, and I'm glad that it's over. I'm ready for some cooler weather, and I think a lot of you guys are too. Uh, we're, we're getting close to half done with harvest, uh, corn and bean harvest, guys. And your farmer feeders are starting to peek into the market. They like to buy calves. Uh, they like to feed calves. They like to feed middleweight calves so they can put more pounds on with their cheaper uh, homespun corn there. Uh, and and it'll cheapen those cattle up for them and, and help them make a, a, a nice profit level there. But uh, we, we start seeing them peek around. We started seeing some of our bigger reputation strings of calves coming. Most of them still ballers up in the northern plains, but uh, fresh ballers. Don't short wean your calves. You're not helping anybody by weaning your calves a few days or a week. It, it, it's it's foolish to do. I hate to say it. Some people think they want to get the ball out of them and then bring them. Those cattle are poison if you wean them uh, for a few days or a week or even 10 days and then bring them to the sale. Do not do that. If, if you're not going to wean them uh, 45 days or more, don't, don't wean them at all. Just bring them right off the cow fresh that morning and your buyers will have better luck uh, straightening them out. Uh, and they'll be more apt to bid on your calves next year. Let's talk about your board uh, for last week. October live cattle futures. Monday was down 70 and Tuesday was up 20. Wednesday up a buck 92. Thursday up 90 cents and Friday down 27. October live cattle futures ended the week at 185.12. That was up $2.05 for the week. That's going to be uh, a little bit premium to what our weighted average is going to be in the five area feeding region, uh, but it's not running off and leaving it. But we saw a $2 gain uh, in your spot October, but December was only up eight cents for the week at 186.75. Made me feel good this last week, not only that we had some negotiated trade, but that the board was chasing cash instead of cash always letting board lead the way when the board really has nothing to do with anything fundamental. Uh, let's talk about your, your feeder cattle futures. They were very volatile this week. Even spot October moved triple digits in one direction or another every single day last week. Uh, that, that makes you nervous. October feeder cattle Monday was down about 47. Tuesday was up $1.05. Wednesday up 222. Now we're seeing some good gains. Thursday up another dollar 85. But then Friday they took back two dollars and fifteen cents off your spot October feeder cattle uh, at the end of the week. That wasn't all profit uh, taking. That that was them just uh, pushing back down on the board. But October feeder cattle ended the week at 249.87. That was still up a dollar and a half for the week. November ended the week at 251.57, up 70 cents for the week. Uh, December new crop corn ended the week. Regular trading at 493 and a quarter, up a up a penny and a quarter cent a bushel. November soybeans ended the week at 1280 and a quarter, up 14 and a quarter cent a bushel. 
Kansas City hard red winter winter wheat for December uh, was down four and a quarter cent at six sixty nine a bushel. Your fat cattle trade up through Thursday of last week negotiated uh, sales in your five area feeding region totaled almost seventy thousand head. That's pretty impressive, guys, uh, for this day and time. Uh, your live sales of fat steers and heifers ranged in price last week in the five area feeding region from 182 to 186 that was one to two dollars higher on the price spread your weighted average on live steers in the five area up through thursday was 184.14 that's a roughly a buck and a half higher than last week nice gains there guys uh your dressed market uh, last week ranged from 290 to 299 and a quarter Wow, that 299 and a quarter was way up there. It was mostly 290 to 292 for the most part, uh, and that would be. Uh, but your big, your big range, 290 to 299 and a quarter, would be three to four and a half dollars higher. Uh, your weighted average on dress trade, dress steers, 291.67 last week. That was up around two dollars and fifty cents a uh, hundred there. And basically, your market last week in the Northern Plains was two to three dollars higher, from 184 to 186 live on most everything. Two bucks higher dress from 290 to 292 on pretty much everything. Uh, your Southern Plains was one to mostly two dollars higher, from 183 to largely 184, especially by the end of the week. Friday, we had some more negotiated trade out of the five area feeding region. Iowa sold 2,000 head, confirmed 28,500 head for the week. Live sales on Friday were just 184 to 187, uh, by far the highest price spread that we'd seen all week, and dress trade at 294, uh, about the highest. Nebraska sold 4,100 head on Friday, almost 25,000 for the week. Good movement for both of them and Nebraska. Uh, confirmed sales uh, 182 to 186 live and 292 dressed on Friday. Kansas sold a few more, about 400 head and 10,700 head for the week, all at 184 there on Friday. Texas 300 head, 12,600 head negotiated trade in Texas. That, that's the biggest we've seen for a long, long time. 184 live price, and that's it. Box beef cutout values. Did gain some ground last week uh, as a whole, and so we've been waiting for that to kind of kickstart. Uh, I still don't trust it that it's going to take off and stay above $300 on the choice cutout, but uh, it, it did gain some ground last week. Your weighted average on all of last week's choice sales, choice cutout value trade, was up 142 at 301.35 on the weighted average. Your late Friday sales were about a half a dollar lower than that, but they were still above uh, $3 a pound. Your weighted average on last week's uh, select cutout sales was two seventy five eighty nine. That was up $30 compared to the previous week's weighted average. And your late Friday sales are about a half a dollar cheaper than that too, late Friday. But uh, the price uh, choice select spread uh, on your weighted average movement was about $25.46 and again we had fairly significant uh, spot cash sales on your box beef cutout value report of almost 700 loads of cuts, grinds and trimmings and that's a lot more than we typically see. Uh, your slaughter for last week and I mentioned this it was disappointing only 617,000 that's 11,000 less than the previous week 45,000 less than the same week a year ago. Talk about what else is going on. Ever Ag, Ever Ag Risk Management specializes in dairy, swine, cattle, and grain brokerage insurance services, including all the main ones uh, that, that are helped out with USDA, LRP, DRP, uh, LGM, and PRF. Also, uh, they specialize in advisory services to buyers and sellers of grain products and vault software. For more information, go to ever.ag. Let's talk about your feeder cattle market, your real-time index 
on DV auction based on the 800 pound steer running from from uh, 800 to eight or 700 to 899 pounds. Your weighted average up through your middle 12 states of a cash auction steer mimics your CME cash feeder cattle index, but it's our information and it's all cash auction information, and that's it. Uh, it ended the week at 244.38, actually down a dollar and 54 cents for the week. Uh, CME cash feeder cattle index still hanging way up there, just over 250, but it was down about a half a dollar for the week. Um, and I'm not exactly sure why that is. They're, uh, they're trying to keep the price spreads narrow. Your market reporters are. They're downgrading a lot of cattle that are still going to go on feed, and I don't know why those cattle wouldn't belong in there too. But your, your trends last week and your feeder cattle auctions, it started out steady to weak on feeder cattle. It wasn't a ball of fire early last week. Uh, your board was down on Monday. Uh, we'd had a rough uh, end of the week the week before and your early week sales on feeder cattle going right into the feedlot was was kind of weak and it was a little bit rougher there uh, after your board was up big uh, on Wednesday it, it kind of turned around on Tuesday but nobody paid much attention to it when it was up big on Wednesday uh, that that gave everybody a little more confidence and then by late in the week and over the weekend uh, your feeder cattle were higher uh, but like I said, we're, we're mostly dominated by calves this time of year. Uh, your fancy long strings of reputation calves, especially if they're long time weaned and had all their shots. But even the, uh, the, those fresh weaned calves right off the cow, if they've had one full round for sure and, and two rounds even better, uh, good demand for those. I'm going to give you some top quotes uh, late last week or over the weekend. Uh, one of them is Bluegrass Stockyards in Richmond, Kentucky. Jim Dawes does such a good job there with that cattle auction. He sold 58 head of 807 pound yearling feeder steers in Kentucky for $249.75. That's a premium, guys. How about uh, Teto Medina, my buddy uh, down at Santa Teresa, New Mexico, on the border? He sold Mexican cattle. Uh, they'd be calf weight yearlings is what they are, uh, be hard as rocks. He sold 81 head of 500 pound steers for two fifty six fifty. Crawford Livestock Market, Crawford, Nebraska, and a lot of cattle moving up there in that western Nebraska, uh, up into South Dakota, uh, right in there, a lot of cattle moving. They had some pretty good snow uh, last week uh, that was scattered around there. Everybody likes to buy cattle that's had snow on their backs. Now, these might have had snow on their backs on the way into the sale or standing in the sale, but it didn't hurt them any. But uh, Crawford Livestock Market sells 84 650 pound steer calves at 296.75, weighing six and a half people. That's very impressive. How about St. Ong's Livestock? My buddy Justin Tupper there, he had some of the highest five weight calves that I saw anywhere. He sold 110 537 pound fancy steer calves. They bring 322. And that's your Macrosin, no BS, top quote for the day.